Hello there guys, my name is Coach Shadog, Stubborn Book Built for Theme Park News and welcome to a Theme Park Newsroom update. Now today is a discussion video, we haven't done a discussion video in quite some time and today we're going to be discussing about the long term future of one of Alton Tower's most thrilling themed areas, Forbidden Valley. Now before we get started, please like the video if you've loved it, comment down below your thoughts and opinions, I'd love to do a social media lounge where I react to your comments about this and sort of see what your suggestions are for Forbidden Valley's future. Make sure you subscribe to the Coaster Channel and click the notification bell so you never miss a YouTube video. Make sure you keep subscribing as well, guys. We're well past the 1,500 mark now. We're on the road to 2,000 subscribers. Let's keep this channel going because I think we could be right up there with the likes of Pleasure Beach Experience, Jack Silkstone, Theme Park Worldwide. We could be right up there with the best of them if you guys please subscribe to me. So please, please keep subscribing and the content will keep improving. Make sure you share the channel with your friends, your family, and on social media. And make sure you keep getting your questions in for our next Q&A when we celebrate 2,000 subscribers. Use the hashtag question before or after your question. I'm giving you a choice. And for now, guys, let's get into this video. So a little bit of history for you, first of all. Thunder Valley was created in 1990, and the introduction of the Thunder Looper signaled a really significant change in the thrill market at Alton Towers Resort. In 1992, the new beast came from the then-known Talbot Street area, of course now known as the World of David Williams in 2020, and of course the Children's Coast of the Beastie both came into the area. In 1994, there was a massive, massive development. It was known as Nemesis, a Bulgar and Mabillard inverted roller coaster. Now, along with Nemesis in 1994, in 1997, Ripsaw, the Hoss Top Spin, was created, and the Blade, then known as the Pirate Ship in the old Fantasy World, now known as X Sector, was moved from Fantasy World, ready for the Secret Weapon 4 development in 1998, now known, of course, as the B&M Dive Coaster, Oblivion. Then, in 2002, another big development to Forbidden Valley was created, with the addition of Air, a B&M flying coaster on the former site of the new Beast, and of course the new car, well not new, but car park behind it. And of course, the latest new opening developments was of course in 2016 in Forbidden Valley, when Galactica came in, which the world's first coaster dedicated to virtual reality. Of course, that was the re-theme of Air into Galactica, and of course the introduction in the old Air shop of the brand new roller coaster restaurant, a first of its kind in the UK. Of course, a copy of Food Loop at Europa Park. Now, of course, there have been removals in recent years, with the removal of Subterra, a dark ride that first opened in 2012 on the former site of Lava Lump, which was a relocated rock climbing wall from Ugland. Of course, the closure of Ripsaw, the SBNO and currently unknown future of Blade, and of course, the HB Leisure game that replaced Ripsaw. So today we're going to be looking at future sites, combined future sites, and also possible developments on each of those sites. So let's start with site number one. And site number one on your screen now is the Galactica Car Park. Now the Galactica Car Park has been a talked about coaster site for many, many years. Now that has been talked about as a future coaster site for a long, long time. And I'm going to be looking at what kind of coasters we could see in this site. Now of course I've circled the site in yellow, which you can already see on your screen. But that isn't, of course, all the site. You could, al you could always stretch it back even further and possibly into more of the tree line. So, obviously, with Alton Tower's new coasters and new attractions, you've got to think of one thing, and that is the height of them. They have a specific height limit on their rise and attractions. You can't see it above the tree height, and there's a reason for that. Spoken about in a Smiler documentary back in 2013 from Blue Peter, the cons they're in a conservation area, a conservation area, so they've got to treat res respect. So they've got to dig deeper for a taller ride. Basically meaning they can't build above the tree height because they're in a conservation area. So, for non- that's why Nemesis is in a massive pit. That's why Oblivion is, you know, dug further down on the old site. Because it is a tall ride. They had to dig deeper. That's why dug deeper in the pit with Smiler in the old black hole site because it was such a tall ride they had to dig deeper so with this into, into consideration I think in the Galactica car park we could see a coaster that's very low to the ground and it could be something as simple as a low to the ground multi-launch now it could be something on the lines of Taron or maybe a smaller panth a much smaller pantheon 
uh, at Busch Gardens Williamsburg that's set to open this year in 2020, if and when the parks do open. Uh, now, of course, it can't just be all coasters. Now, I had a little theory, and I've been thinking about this for a little bit. What if they used that car park as an expansion and they created a couple of flats or family rides and they used Galactica, so Forbidden Valley cuts off from where Galactica starts and the entrance to Galactica starts and you sort of enter a brand new space realm, like a brand new space area. So you have Galactica and then you have the rides behind it, so a, a, ride, like a, th a themed area themed to the cosmos or like a sci-fi spacey theme and Galactica is sort of the main headline entrance attraction to the new area. That's just one of my theories, it may not happen, it may happen, we don't know. Uh, but either a coaster, like a load, a load to the ground coaster or a space themed area with a few family rides and attractions behind Galactica would be a special shout. Moving into our next site then, and this is of course Ripsaw. Now Ripsaw is a Hus top spin First opened in 1997 and closed just a few years ago for the Towers Loving Care program. Now, Ripsaw, along with Blade, Flume, Spinball Wizard, it was one. Of, it was like the closed rides. It was on the chopping block for a while now as part of the long-term development plan that was first introduced years ago. Um, like the long-term future of Alton Towers. Obviously, they've stuck to that with the removal of Flume, Ripsaw, and Blade. But, uh, well, Blade, we don't know it yet, whether it's been removed or not, but it is SBNO at the minute, so there's a possibility it could be. Spinball's still running, obviously, but for how much longer? Uh, especially with CBB's land right next to it and eating away at Adventureland. Uh, now, of course, with Ripsaw's site, it's been replaced by a HB Leisure game. Now, of course, that was Forbidden Sweep. I did have a go on it. It was exhausting. I was out of shape at the time, but it was a lot of fun. Now... With that site, I do believe that a new flat ride could be in order. Now, whether that means combining the Blade site, which I'll talk about in a bit later on in the video, or it could just be a different um, attraction, we don't know. Now, the top spin at Chessington is being replaced in 2021 with a drop tower. Now, of course, with Subterragon, we don't have a drop tower at Alton Towers, and it's something that Thorpe Park's got. It's something that Chessington's getting next year. It's something that Alton Towers could look into. Now, it doesn't have to be a thrilling one like a detonator where it's like 100 foot tall and, you know, all that massive speed. But it could be a family thrill one like Chessington's getting. It could be something like a magma at Paltons Park. Something family thrill, something exciting, something that fits the target market, but a flat ride, a permanent flat ride for Forbidden Valley. It's a flat ride, it, well, a new flat ride that we haven't seen in ages. Like the last sort of, um, the last flat ride in terms of thrilling flat rides that was added to the park was... You know, you, you're going back to the likes, and it doesn't include relocations, by the way. You're going back to the likes of Submission, which first opened in, like, 2001. So, we haven't had a new permanent flat ride in a long time. So, I'd like to see a drop tower at Alton Towers on either Ripsaw's site or the Blade site, and I'll talk about Blade in a bit. So, I think that a drop tower is a possibility, or they could go with a wasteland-themed family ride. Now, of course, Ripsaw is like a piece of... Uh, well, the blade's technically like a piece of shrapnel from the Nemesis site, but Ripsaw, of course, it used to, it could have been called the Screw, for those of you who are diehard fans of Towers and know the old planning documents and the old planning concept arts. Uh, it was going to be called the Screw, and that was going to be like a piece of shrapnel as well. So, I th I'd like to see like a wasteland theme where a piece of uh, shrapnel from the Nemesis site, another piece of shrapnel from the Nemesis site is sort of uh, discovered and sort of they sort of do like a rip like a like a wicker man type thing where they sort of create a ritual around this shrapnel of the nemesis and they want to please it and things like that so they sort of make experiments to make it bigger and bigger and bigger i'd like to see that piece of shrapnel turn into like a family ride so if the if cbb's land was to ever put another ride in i'd like to see maybe go jetters move to another area of the park even though it looks brilliant in the cbb's land if they ever wanted to put a new uh, flat ride into CBB's land and they haven't got anywhere else to put it apart from the Nina's Science Lab which is of course SBNO at the minute again another SBNO ride I'd like to see Gojetters maybe try its look somewhere else in the park now obviously the Ugg Bugs now known as the Bouncing Bugs when it was removed uh, that was a good family attraction I'd like to see something like that maybe so a smaller edition of Go uh, a smaller version of Gojetters we know the park likes to add more than one edition of its own ride we know Frog Hopper now Roger's Bouncy Bottom Burp at World of David Williams and of course that's the same ride system as Peter Rabbit Hibbity Hop 
at CBeebies Land. So, it's not a crime to add another swirling flam family ride. I'd like to see a wasteland theme with that. So, either a family ride or a drop tower for that Ripsaw site. Moving into our next site, and our next site is The Blade. Now, The Blade, of course, is the Hus pirate ship. Now, it's had a long and distinguished history. Now, this history starts in when the park opened. You know, it was the pirate ship. It was just known as pirate ship. It was in the fantasy world section, along with the likes of Cinema 180 and all those brilliant family attractions. Fantasy World became Exeter in 1998. Oblivion was created, so half of Fantasy World was either removed or demolished or relocated. Uh, ready for Secret Weapon 4 construction in 1997 when Ripsaw was, well, <laughs> ironically, when Ripsaw came in. Uh, and, of course, Thunderlooper was removed uh, in 1996. So, Ripsaw came into the pit and also did the Blade, the relocated and rethemed pirate ship from the old Fantasy World section, which is now X Sector. Now, with the Blade site, I'd, of course, that is currently SBNO. All the parts are laid out in a car park behind Jewel. And it doesn't look like it's coming back anytime soon. It was listed on the app. We all thought, yep, it's coming back later in the season after essential maintenance. It's like another Enterprise situation. Maybe it's not. Maybe it is not. Uh, so we don't know what the situation currently is with the Blade. Obviously, one option is it could stay for another couple of years. Obviously, it was refurbished recently, don't forget. Like, sort of a year ago, it had all its parts sort of refurbished and maintained and stuff like that. So it's not a crime if they bring it back because it's only just been refurbished. So... There's a real potential here to bring it back. Um, I also believe that if the blade was to go, again, a drop tower would be perfect on that site. Or, or, a frisbee ride. Now, they have an intermin gyro swing at Drayton Manor, known as Maelstrom. Uh, but, if they were to the tree high, I'd like to see a frisbee ride at the park. They could dig deeper into the blade pit. They could introduce this frisbee ride, either Zamperla model or intermin model. And I'd like to see that work because it'd be a good extreme flat ride for the Forbidden Valley section of the park. So a frisbee ride or the drop tower or blade stays. Now, Subterra 2012 Dart Ride from ABC Rides. Now the drop tower system is currently removed from the site. It's been demolished, it's been removed, it's been put somewhere else. <laughs> Probably it's either put somewhere else or it's been demolished. But the ride system isn't in the building at the minute. Now the building is currently being used for Scarefest attraction Project 42 and it has been uh, since a couple of years ago. So I'd like to see something permanently done with the building. Now of course one option could be an extreme horror walkthrough experience. Now we love walkthrough experiences. Now whether it means it's IP or not we don't know. But, I think if it was to be an IP and they were going to go for a horror type experience, walkthrough experience, I could see maybe Alton Towers, you know, trying to get in touch with the likes of Stranger Things and maybe Resident Evil and Outlast. Outlast is a brilliant horror game. There was an Outlast 1 uh, where it's like a mental asylum, Outlast 2 which is like this this religious cult thing under Papanoth and this whole village sort of, you know, believing these ridiculous things and you know everything like that so i feel like there's a real sort of thing here with that now one other thing i do think is i think if they were going to go for a horror experience i'd like to see something specifically done in terms of making it a horror experience so jump scares something permanent when they get the funds back in for the tap i know obviously with the smiler incident and everything like that and obviously the current crisis Funds have been a bit of a problem in the theme park industry and sort of raising the funds for certain attractions on the park would be an issue. Once they get the funds back up, I'd like to see a permanent actor-led walkthrough experience, horror experience. If they were going to go for an IP, Outlast would be one of my main choices. If it was original, I'd like to see the Dark Apocalypse theme used. Now, Dark Apocalypse was a scare zone around the Subterra site in 2015. It first started in 2015, the same year as the one-year Dark Forest scare zone experience, Nox Infernus. Now, I think either one of those. I don't think we're going to see a dark ride system, like the drop rides or like a Gangster Granny system, because I think the I think with Gangster Granny already in, I think that another version of that for the for the teens and for the horror enthusiasts and the thriller enthusiasts wouldn't be the best option. It wouldn't be a best copy of a ride system. So I think we we'll, could be looking at a walkthrough experience. 
if they were to keep the building and bring in a permanent attraction, it'd be a walkthrough experience, either something original or IP. So that is Subterra. Now let's combine two sites with Ripsaw and the Blade. Now Ripsaw and the Blade, again the Drop Tower or the Frisbee are both good options. But something else I've been discussing about and it's something for another site, the last site we've got to talk about as well. And that is a compact coaster. Now I think that a multi-launch shuttle coaster could work very well at the park. Not a secret weapon, it could be a secret weapon if you wanted to. But I think that something like a multi-launch shuttle coaster at the park would work very very well. Now, in terms of manufacturers, I'd like to see something like an SNS or a Gerslau. You look at um, Slagharan's Coaster Gold Rush. That was a very good addition for the park. Uh, so I thought that would be really nice. Uh, so I think that there's a couple of good options there. But now when we go across to the final site on your screen now, fun dabby dozy, that is a combination of Ripsaw, Blade and Subterra. Now, this combination, in my opinion would show there's a real potential of um, like a real more out and back stretched out compact multi-launch shuttle coaster. Now of course looking at the coaster types, multi-launch is something the park haven't got. They've got one launch coaster in Rita which I think could be on the way out in the future but they haven't got a multi-launch more than one launch. Good opportunity to work with Intamin on this as well. I think that Intamin would be a good shout on this uh, because, of course, they've worked on 13, Rita, and I think that Intamin would be really good. Now, you look on your screen with that site where this outstretched out and back multi launch could be, you notice that circle of land, that circle of grassland with the little Nemesis tentacle gun. I think, in terms of the theme of the ride, and of course, integrating the coaster with the current surroundings could be very creative and creatively potential for Alton Towers is massive. You could integrate the supports around the rock work surrounding this tentacle gun item, I guess. Um, you could do like a nice uh, zero G stall, so you're hanging over the top of the Nemesis tentacle gun like you're doing battle with the Nemesis. And that brings me on to the theme. I think the theme of this could be a beast. Uh, that's trying to battle with the nemesis. It's risen from uh, the Thunderlooper surface and the Ripsaw surface and the Blade surface and it's sort of uh, metamorphosized and it's sort of battling with the nemesis creature. So there's real creative potential with that. So there we go. So that my friends is looking at all the creative potential and looking at all the different sites of Forbidden Valley for the long term future. Obviously we'll be doing the same with other areas of the theme park as well. So make sure you stay tuned for more videos over the next few weeks and the next couple of months from that while we're still under lockdown. Hopefully lockdown gets lifted uh, very very soon. Obviously we've extended it for another three weeks at the very least uh, from what we heard last. So uh, hopefully after those three weeks the situation will calm down now and uh, we'll try and start getting back to normal. We know other European countries have started li uh, sort of ease their restrictions a little bit. So um, maybe this is the start of the downward spiral of coronavirus cases and things like that. So we're about to hopefully win this war. Uh, so thank you very much guys for watching this video. Keep up to date with the rest of my content over this closed season and this lockdown period. I've actually watched back through a few of my old videos. In the future, in the next couple of years, I may do a reaction video where I react to my old videos. So stuff like this from a couple of years ago, I may react to it in a few years' time. So comment down below if you want that. Comment down below over the next couple of years whether you want that or not. And I'll keep record of how many want it. And we'll sort of decide in a couple of years whether we decide to do that or not. So thank you very much. I'll be doing more of these long-term future area discussions as well with other areas of other theme parks in Europe, Thought Park, Chessington, Poultons things like that so it'd be very nice to do videos on that so thank you very much for watching this theme park newsroom update please like comment subscribe and click the location bell see you next youtube video and for now guys i'm coach chow keep living the coast life and i'll see you guys in the next video very very soon take care guys have an awesome day